Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to add and subtract, multiply and divide, as well as to determine the domain um, of functions uh, when we are given uh, some rational functions as well as uh, some radical uh, functions. So a little bit of extra math here to get going to it, but um, that's pretty good. That's the whole purpose of this is kind of rewind. And I'm not going to find the domain, actually, of every function. Um, I'm only going to work about when we do our dividing as determining the domain. So all right, so first of all, uh, we have to add. So we're going to add two rational functions. Uh, so just kind of like in Algebra 2 here, we have to say, all right, well, I'm basically going to be adding my two functions. So I'm going to have you know, 8x over, ooh. That one's not a good one. Let's use, I guess I'll use black again. So I have you know, 8x over x minus 2 uh, plus 6 over x plus 3. Now, remember, when you're adding fractions, you can only add fractions that have exactly the same denominator. So the problem that we have in this problem is our denominators are not the same. So we need to obtain the common denominator. Well, the easiest way to obtain the common denominator here is to see, do they have any common factors? And no, they do not. So we can't factor anything out or common factors. But what we can see is I can multiply them to obtain our least common denominator, which would be um, yeah, x minus 2 times x plus 3. So what I'll do then is just multiply x minus 2 over here on the top and the bottom and x plus 3 over here on the top and the bottom. And remember, whenever you're multiplying you know, to get common denominators, you make sure you multiply on the top and the bottom. That's going to help you produce equivalent fractions. So I'll rewrite. Now we need to apply distributive property. Distributive property. Um, and I am going to leave, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it, and then I'll do one. I'll do it like the other equation. I'll simplify it out. So therefore, I'd have um, 8x squared plus 24x divided by x plus 3 times x minus 2 plus 6x minus 12 all over x plus 3 times x minus 2. Now you can see that my denominators are exactly the same, so now I can just add my numerators. Well, the only two terms I can combine on my numerators are my middle two terms. So my final answer is 8x squared plus 30x minus 12. Now, a lot of books or tests or your teachers might want you to multiply out uh, your denominator. So that's perfectly fine here. I understand that. Um, so if we multiply that out, it'd be you're going to have to apply FOIL here. So that's going to be x squared plus 3x, or um, minus 2x minus 6, so 3x ticks. So when I multiply that out, I'm just going to try to mix this up a little bit quicker. So it's going to be x squared plus x minus 6. And that's going to be f plus g of x. OK, so now let's get into subtraction. Now, to kind of make this a little bit easier, you understand that subtracting is the exact same thing as adding, right? So really, I, don't, I can do all this work again, but let's save ourselves a little time and a little effort. Let's just do the exact same problem. Let's just rewrite it. We know we're going to have to multiply by x over to 3 on top and bottom. We know I'm going to multiply x minus 2 on top and bottom. So let's just rewrite this. But instead of using addition, we'll use subtraction. So I have 8x squared plus 24x all over x plus 3 times x minus 2, and now minus 6x minus 12 over x plus 3 times x minus 2. Now remember, when we're looking at minus, it's best to really put this in parentheses. So what that's going to tell you is I need to subtract the 6x as well as subtract a negative 12x. A lot of times I distribute and rewrite it as an addition problem. So you know, that's a lot of times sometimes easier. But since we're only really combining the middle terms, you can see that 8x squared, um, 24x minus 6x. And then now I'm going to minus a negative 12x, which will make it a positive 12x. So um, in reality here, if I just do f minus g of x, I'm just going to write the answer in red because I don't want to confuse everybody. Then my final answer would be 8x squared, 24x minus 6x is going to be a negative 18x, and then minus a negative 12, which would be a positive 12. And then my denominator is really going to be unchanged. That's going to be x squared plus x minus 6. OK, all right, very good. So now let's go ahead and look into multiplication. Now, when multiplying, if you remember, just like when you're multiplying fractions, when we multiply, you simply multiply the numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So 
to multiply this, basically, I'm just going to have 8x over x minus 2 times 6 over x plus 3. Well, fortunately for us, you know, when we multiply a, an expression, a, you know, 8x times 6x, that's just going to be 24x. And then we already know x minus 2 times x plus 3 because we use that for our common denominator. So that is uh, x squared plus x minus 6. And there you go. That's your final answer. Um, you can see, the again, the domain in all these would be all real numbers, except for x cannot equal negative 3 and positive 2. But let's go ahead and get into the domain of Let's go ahead and get into the domain of a division problem. And I guess I'll go back to black here. All right, um, so division, I'm going to be dividing the g of x function divided by the f of x function. So therefore, I'll have 8x, or 8x divided by x minus 2 divided by 6 over x plus 3. So that's f of g of x. So the difficult thing is when you have a fraction divided by another fraction, you got to think, you know, well, how, how do I divide a fraction by a fraction? So the best thing to do in this case is to multiply by the reciprocal. So simply what I'm going to do is or multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So here I have x plus 3 over 6, x plus 3 over 6. And the reason why that works is, one, whenever you multiply in the denominator and in the numerator, um, you're producing equivalent fractions, so you're not changing the problem. And then also, any number multiplied by its reciprocal we know is going to go to 1. Now here, I just need to multiply across. Well, here's a binomial, so let's put this in parentheses. Let's put that one in parentheses. And then let's just simply apply distributive property. Okay, so therefore, in simplifying this, I get 8x squared plus 24x. And then down here, I get divided by 6x minus 12. Okay, now um, that is for f of g. Now, to determine the domain, remember, all we simply need to do is set our denominator, set it equal to 0, and find the values that are going to make it make that true. And those are not going to be a part of your um, function. So add 12. 6x equals 12. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. x equals 2. That means our domain is all real numbers where x cannot equal 2. Or using interval notation, which would be negative infinity u, um, to 2 union 2 to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add, subtract, multiply, divide two, fun two rational functions. Now let's get into radical. Now, radical, fortunately, um, <laughs> is only really going to work here uh, for the, ooh, I'm kind of ran out of space here. Dang. All right. I guess I can, I don't need this anymore, right? We can just say we knew that. OK, so fortunately, I don't really have to do a lot of work, though. Because when we're adding two radical functions, we cannot add um, our radicands. We can oh, I'm sorry. We can only add our radicals when we have the radicands are exactly the same. Well, in this case, you can see these radicands are not exactly the same. So therefore, let's do a different color. f plus g of x is just simply going to be x plus 4 plus the square root of x minus 3. You can't combine them. And when we do subtraction, it's going to be the exact same thing. f, actually, you know what? That's fine. f minus a g of x is just going to be the square root of x plus 4 minus square root of x minus 3. So we can't do any, we, you can't do anything. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, the domain, I don't know why I have to be all this. Uh, so we'd have to go and take a look at you know, what would not make those uh, 0 or make those negative numbers. So any number that is you know, less than negative 4, um, but then also um, less than 3, 2. So negative 4, but then also going up to uh, negative 2 wouldn't work. So it would have to be greater than negative 2. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and get into the multiplication. I'll do f of g right here. 
Now, when we're multiplying, though, the radicands do not have to be the same. And we can multiply the radicand simply by the other radicand. So basically, what I do is when I'm multiplying these, I can rewrite them under the same square root and just rewrite them as x plus 4 times x minus 3. Well, now I can just simplify that, apply my FOIL, and I'll have x squared plus 4x minus 3x. So that's going to be just plus x. And then 4 minus 3 is a negative 12. Okay? Um, and then obviously, again, using your, uh, using your domain of what's going to make those, um, any one of those uh, greater than 0. Um, let's see here. All right, and now the, the division. So that's going to be f of g of x. And so that's simply just going to be x plus 4 divided by the square root of x minus 3. Now, again, now this one is, when we're dealing with this one, we, we're only going to be dealing with that, we're going to deal with values that, um, again, cannot equal, we cannot have 0 in our denominator. Um, as well as we can't have numbers that are going to be negative. So we look at this and we say, all right, you know, basically, x minus 3 has to be greater than 0. So we add 3, add 3. x has to be greater than 3. So that means all numbers that are greater than 3. So the really only way we can write this is going to be interval, interval notation. But it can't actually equal 3, because if it equaled 3, then it would be 0 on the bottom. So therefore, it's going to be all values from 3 to infinity. Any number that is 3 or less is going to not going to be a part of the domain. That's why I'm using the parentheses and not the bracket. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add, subtract, multiply, and divide, as well as identify the domain of a function. Thanks.